Well, your mother always told you not to do it. According to our next guest, lying to yourself is one of the biggest reasons we have problems in our relationships at work or with family. In his latest book, Stop Lying, Getting Unlost and Unstuck in Your Life, Dr. Bennett Polige, a psychologist who is also an actor, has studied over the past 30 years the results of not being honest with oneself. He joins us this morning to give us more details on why we lie to ourselves and how it can derail our lives. Welcome to Urban Update. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. And to, what, uh, stop lying. To, what, what's this book all about? Okay. Excellent. Because I want to be clear, our mothers told us not to lie on purpose. I'm talking in the book about unconscious lies, lies that we're not aware of. So it's a, that's a separate thing. Okay. Um, I'm not talking about what the little kid does who says, you know, with crumbs all over his face, I didn't have a cookie, that, that's conscious. I'm talking about the lies that start unconsciously or become unconscious. Those are the ones that get us into trouble. They mess up our lives in countless ways. Well, why do we do it? What's the, the basic premise of why we tell ourselves lies and why we believe them? It starts uh, as a defense. It starts as a necessary survival tactic uh, in the very young. And um, it'll work for a while. And uh, if it isn't, if, if you're lucky, if you have a good upbringing, if you have some good experiences, you'll drop most of it and function well. Uh, if you don't, or if you have a lot of trauma, it becomes really entrenched and then it stops working. So it becomes a symptom. The defense kind of fails and runs amok. And then you have symptoms. I can really illustrate this best with a, with a case example. Do okay. Time to do that? Let's hear it. And I was thinking, you know, how do I, the book is full of case examples. In fact, if you go to Amazon and look at the book, you get a free sample of like 15 pages or something, and it has like four cases right there. But the one I could talk about here is, is a movie, which most people have seen, so it's a quick way to get into it. The movie is Good Will Hunting. I hope people still rec oh, recognize yes. that. Oh, yes. So if you think here about that Boston movie. They do. Okay, right, Boston. So if you think about that movie, good, good city to do this in. That kid is uh, 18, 19 years old, and he's living this depressed and constricted life, lives in this ramshackle house that he grew up in. He hasn't fixed it up. He's got this tiny circle of friends. He doesn't avail himself of any of his gifts. And what started, uh, we realize later in the movie, what caused all this is growing up physically abused by his, I think, drunken foster father or foster mm -hmm. or father. And the first lie that he had to tell to survive, so he wouldn't go nuts, is, I can, ha I can handle this, I'm not scared. And that gets exaggerated as he grows up, and when you meet him, he's like a thug. He's, he's getting into fights all the time, he pushes everybody away, he uh, is disrespectful to everybody, he, he keeps to his little tiny life, and it's a, really quite a depressed, inhibited uh, life. The, sim the, def the defense has run amok. It's become, it doesn't work for him anymore. He's got this, this constricted life. Now, the therapist, man Robin Williams, manages to break through one set of lies at the beginning. The lie of, I don't need anybody, I'm fine. Nothing hurts me, you know, I don't, I'm fine. And he makes friends with this guy. And then he can avail himself of a few things. He forms a relationship with the pre-med student. And then at the end, the big climactic therapy session, the big lie is broken through, and that lie is, Robin Williams keeps getting in his face saying, um, all that abuse that happened to you wasn't your fault. Mm -hmm. The kid goes, yeah, yeah, I know. And Robin Williams says, no, 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 it wasn't your fault. Because the truth is the kid doesn't know it wasn't his fault. That's why he's living as he does, because he believes it was his fault. He believes he is the piece of garbage his father treated him as such. Now, obviously, that was, uh, that was kind of an extreme example mm -hmm. here. But how many people do this lie to themselves? Is that something everybody does or a few people do? There are people who don't, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, obviously, in my profession, I meet the people who do. And I think a lot of us do, to some degree. And it's, again, you're right, not as dramatic as that. But I want to emphasize the importance of all this is not just it's fun to catch lies. Mm -hmm. Is that, again, looking at the movie, when the lie is uncovered, when the kid realizes that what he really feels is his father was right, mm -hmm. he's racked with sobs, mm -hmm. and the truth floods in, and his symptoms go away. And then his life moves on, and it really happens that way. Now, in your, in your book, how do you suggest people deal with this? Hmm. Or is there a way to deal with it? Uh, yes, and it can happen, it of course happens in therapy, yeah. but it can happen with friends, it can happen. I think a good stand-up comic sometimes opens your eyes to lies that you're telling yourself. A comic says, uh, did you ever notice? And you realize you've seen it a thousand times, but you've never seen it, you've never noticed. Um, uh, I, I, there's a story in the book about a woman on a date and, and thankfully, they didn't get defensive. People often lie on dates. 
And as a result, their relationship opened up, she calmed down, she felt much better, all mm -hmm. because her date pointed out something she was doing that didn't quite fit. Now, in your book, you draw parallels between acting and psycho, uh, <laughs> psychotherapy, I guess. Uh, where, where, where that's, a pet that that's a pet interest of mine. I've always noticed the parallels. Um, actor training, of all the different types of actor training all come down to the same thing, mm -hmm. helping you Good. find out when you're lying, when you're not telling the truth as you're trying to on stage. And, and what about the types of lies? Are there some lies? Are there certain types of lies that people uh, uh, tend to tell themselves the most? Yeah, the one we saw in Goodwill Hunting is okay. I think the most common. You know, I ain't scared. That didn't hurt. You're not bothering me. Uh, another one that's very common, unfortunately, in our culture is the sort of finger pointing one. You're making me angry. You're making me pissed off. You made me feel bad. Often, it's not even angry. What you really did is you shook me up, you made me scared, and you triggered something in me that I bring into, into my life everywhere. Okay. And, and that's the trick is you asked how to do this. One of the tricks is don't get defensive. And what would you like everyone to take away from you, the thing that you'd like people to take away from your book? Uh, okay, real quick. Um, <laughs> When you're stuck, when you can't stop using drugs, uh, chasing the wrong people, uh, all the symptoms, being uh, unreasonably anxious, unreasonably depressed, when you're stuck, it's because, and psychotherapy isn't working, it's because there's a okay. lie that needs to be uncovered. Okay. And the second thing is that when you uncover that lie, really happens, your symptoms will start to go away. Okay, the website is? Oh, aboutpsychotherapy.com. Okay, no okay. Dr. Bennett, apology. And um, don't forget to stop lying. Okay, <laughs> thanks for coming in. Well, that's it for this edition of Urban Update. For all of us here at Urban Update, I'm Byron Barnett. Have a great Sunday and have a great rest of your 4th of July holiday weekend. Thanks.